Hey guys, on this episode of Camp Outside, we're going to take a look at campsites 123, 124, 125, 126, and 127 at Fort DeSoto Park in Pinellas County, Florida. Check it out. Hey guys. I'm Kevin with Kemp Outside, your inside source for all things outside. If you have been watching my channel for a while now, you know that we have been doing a lot of videos from Fort DeSoto Park in Pinellas County, Florida. It's right at the mouth of Tampa Bay. It's a beautiful place to do some coastal camping or exploring uh, here in Florida. And guys, I love this park. It's really close to my house, so we go there a lot. We've done a park overview video, so we show you all the amenities of the park and all the different things you can do there. If you haven't seen that, check that out. I'll put a link down in the description below. And we've also done a campground overview video. And so if you're planning a trip to Fort DeSoto, you've never been there before, check out that video. We show you all the amenities of the campground and, and help you see everything so that you can plan your trip. And then guys, we've also been doing site-by-site -site reviews of all of the campsites at Fort DeSoto Park. We weren't able to shoot them all, and some of them were occupied the entire time we were there. But we were able to shoot like 183 individual sites, and we're bringing all those to you. Today's video is going to be from Area 2 in the campground. Area 2 is suitable for all camping units and does allow pets. The other two areas, areas one and three, do not allow pets. So if you're gonna be camping with your furry friend, you wanna make sure that you get a site in area two. So with that guys, let's get right into the campsite videos. Fort DeSoto Park is located on a barrier island at the southern tip of Pinellas County. It's just southwest of St. Petersburg and it's at the mouth of Tampa Bay. The campground at Fort DeSoto Park is located just south of the boat ramp on the main entrance road. The majority of the campground is located on St. Christopher Key and the entire campground has access to the water and Mullet Key Bayou. The closest restroom facility for the sites we're going to take a look at today is restroom number four. Restroom four is a full service restroom facility with running water, hot showers, and flush toilets. And it also has laundry facilities and a playground is located right next door. The first site we're going to take a look at today is site number 123. 123 is a back-end site and it does not have a water view. So site 123 may not have a water view, but what it does have is easy access to the playground, which is fantastic if you have small kids. So 123 is wide. It does offer some pretty good privacy to the left and the right and is equipped with a charcoal grill, a picnic table, and water and electric hookup. There are no fire rings at Fort DeSoto and ground fires are not allowed. So you either need to bring a fire pit from home or rent a fire pit from the camp store for $3 a night. There's the water and electric hookup. And unfortunately, the playground was closed due to COVID-19 when we were there, which was a major bummer for my son. The next site we're going to take a look at is site number 124. 124 is a back-end site, and it does not have a water view, and it is across from site 123. So there's a trash receptacle just outside site 124. And there's the Kemp bus, so you can see where we stayed when we were here at Fort DeSoto. Site 24 is nice and wide. It has some pretty good shade. It has a picnic table and a charcoal grill and water and electric hookup. It does have some pretty nice privacy to the left and the right, uh, with only a few minor gaps where you can see the sites next to you. Which is nice if you're camping next to friends. Uh, in our case, we were camping next to some friends, so we were able to kind of dash between sites. And there's a pretty good section of woods behind the site. And that is Site 124. 
The next site we're going to take a look at is site 125. 125 does not have a water view, as you can see from the map, but does back up to the playground. So again, these sites are pretty wide and pretty deep, so they offer a large amount of parking if you have a large tow rig, trailer, or RV, or you want to pitch a couple of tents or a tent in a screen house. This site is equipped with a picnic table and a charcoal grill and does have water and electric hookup. And again, if you want a fire, you need to rent a campfire ring from the camp store for $3 a night or bring your own. No ground fires are allowed at Fort DeSoto. There's the water and electric hookup. And as you can see, it empties out into the playground. My son very much wished we had a site that backed up to the playground. But unfortunately, it was closed anyway due to COVID-19. Hoping by the time you watch this video, or especially by the time you camp at Fort DeSoto, that those ribbons have been torn down and that you can play to your heart's content. And the next site we're going to take a look at is site number 126, which is a back-end site indicated by the red arrow. So as we take a look at site 126, I just want to say I really like these sites that aren't on the water because they provide a lot of shelter from the wind. The campground at Fort DeSoto can be quite windy, and it's nice to be able to get out of the wind, especially if you're tent camping like we do. So don't get me wrong, I love water sites, but I also like these sites that are not on the water. This site offers great privacy, great shade. There's the water and electric hookup there. It's equipped with a picnic table and a charcoal grill. These sites on the backside of Area 2 really are a great choice if you're looking for a little privacy and a little seclusion. A good place to hide out after a day at the beach. And the last site we're going to take a look at in this video is site number 127. 127 is another back end site in area 2 without a water view. And it's on an end. And this site is equipped with a picnic table, a charcoal grill, and water and electric hookup. There's trash receptacles not too far from the site. And as we make our way in, you can see, again, this is another site that's nice and wide and deep. Plenty of room for whatever you're going to set up there. The site has pretty good privacy to the left and the right. Again, it's on an end, so you're only going to have a neighbor on one side. There's the water and electric hookup. And then again, if you make your way through the back of this site, you'll see uh, the playground. So again, uh, pretty easy access to the playground, which is great if you have kids. And there's the picnic table and the charcoal grill. So that's site 127, and those are the sites for this video. So guys, I hope you found those video reviews useful. We're doing this at parks all across the nation to help make it easier for you to select a campsite when you're going camping. I know how hard it can be to try and reserve a campsite online and try and figure out whether that site is suitable for your needs. So we're shooting all the empty campsites everywhere we go.
There's a few things I want to mention before I end this video, and it's all about prepping you for camping at Fort DeSoto if it's your first time. First of all, you want to be prepared for the weather. Fort DeSoto can get very hot, so you want to make sure that you stay hydrated and that you stay protected from the sun. That means, you know, sun shirts or long sleeves if you can stand it, but definitely some sunscreen. Uh, keep yourself protected. Also, depending on time of year, the bugs at Fort DeSoto can be pretty bad. So you want to be prepared for mosquitoes and especially no seams. So things like Avon Skin So Soft or a bug spray is really good. And then I also run Thermacell. So if you haven't checked out our Thermacell video, uh, check that out. I'm going to put a link down in the description below on that. And then, guys, the other thing is, is going, getting back to the weather is that especially in the summertime, big convection storms can pop up and it can rain a lot and there can be some high winds. So if you're gonna leave your site for the day to go to the beach or whatever, make sure you've got all your stuff secured. Make sure you've got your tents and screen houses and things properly guyed out and ready for big wind gusts. Or if you have an awning on your camper, you might wanna retract it. I've seen a lot of stuff destroyed at Fort DeSoto from, some, from storms popping up in the summertime. So guys, I hope you enjoy your time at Fort DeSoto. If you have been there, if you uh, love the park, if, they, if you want to tell fellow outsiders the things to do that you enjoy, drop something in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. You can also hit us up on other social media. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. All the links to those are down in the description below. We'd love to hear from you. If you are a mom or a dad who's new to this whole outside thing and you want to get your kids outside, but you're not exactly sure how to start, we would love to hear from you. Drop us a line in any of those social media channels or right here on YouTube and ask any question you want and I would love to answer it. Help you get your kids outside camping, hiking, fishing, you know, any outdoor activity. We really want to help you get your kids outside. Camp Outside it releases new videos every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time right here on YouTube. Our Monday and Tuesday videos are focused on campground and campsite reviews. Our Thursday videos are on a wide range of topics including camping, hiking, fishing, how-to videos, tips and tricks, gear reviews, and a whole lot more. So please hit that subscribe button. And guys, I really hope you enjoy your time at Fort DeSoto. It is one of my family's favorite places to camp. So guys, thanks for watching Camp Outside. We will see you next time.